Hi, and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto, where I like to teach people about crypto. This is a quick part four of my synthetic series, where I'm going to be talking about IRO, because I didn't really cover it in the other episodes. So if you haven't checked out my synth series, check it out here, where I go in depth around um, Thorfire Synthetics. Like always, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this. So what is iRune? With everything we've talked about since, there's no way to actually create synthetic rune or to earn interest just on rune. So at a glance, iRune is basically synthetic rune with a different collateralization method. It has the same features as synthetic assets that we've talked about before, um, such as it can be minted with rune, uh, it can be redeemed to rune, it has the slip discount, it has single asset exposure to rune, and lastly, like other synthetic assets, this synthetic rune can be stored in a vault to earn interest, just like the rune vault, uh, the good old days. The mechanics around the vault and how interest is earned is the same. So let's talk about the collateralization method. The difference with um, iRune is, is how it's collateralized. So normal synthetic asset collateral is stored in its pools. So synthetic Bitcoin collaterals is stored in the Bitcoin pool because that's where Bitcoin is. So that makes sense. iRune is different. It is collateralized by all pools, meaning the collateral is stored in every pool and it can do this because Rune is in every pool. So iRune or synthetic Rune has protocol or global collateral. So what are the effects of this on the network? So the dynamic synth liquidity units concept that we've talked about before is similar, but iRune uses virtual rune balances in each pool instead. Thus, upon minting and redeeming, the rune depth of all pools is altered. Thus, you know, if there's like a large amount of minting, then the depth of the rune in every pool would increase, and if it's redeemed, it would decrease. Um, the collateralization is split amongst the pools proportionally. So obviously, like bigger pools will get more of the rune, uh, eye rune collateral and smaller pools would have less. So it's all proportional. So this has a big effect on the network as it will cause arbing in every pool in the protocol. So just like how normal since collateral has an effect on the pool that we've talked about in part two, um, it's the same thing, but on a global scale. This will drive are being come into every pool on the protocol every time iRune is minted or burned, e.g. redeemed. So there's no set limit on how much iRune can be minted as it would not be bound by the 33% asset loading limit that normal synths are. As you need Rune to mint iRune, it will be governed by the caps until the caps are removed. The actual hard limit for this is total bonded, which means the total amount of Rune in all of the pools plus um, the iRune collateral cannot be more than the total rune bonded by all the nodes. It's kind of like a limit in the network. iRune is to be known as Thor.iRune, not to be confused with just Thor.rune, which is native rune. iRune is expected to have the same protocol and liquidity provider benefits as normal synthetic assets that we've talked about before, such as increasing the TLV and income to liquidity providers. You can check out the spec here for more information. iRune is dependent on the release of synthetics. So don't expect to see it until synthetics is deployed and solid, but do consider it as an option in the future. So that's a quick overview of iRune. I hope you found that useful. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, thanks. Bye.